soccer, a game loved the world round. What other sport inspires such enthusiasm in its fans and finds such dedication in athletes across the globe? This is a sport that unifies the nations. With primitive versions dating more than 3,000 years back, soccer is one of the oldest sports on the planet. It has earned its place both in history and in the hearts of people. Although the Edmonton and District Soccer Association cannot claim the illustrious past of the sport itself, Edmonton and soccer have long been acquainted. For 100 years, the EDSA has strengthened the bond between this city and one of Alberta's first team sports. Soccer has long been a popular pastime in Edmonton, with records as far back as 1862, recalling a frosty December game played in Fort Edmonton Park. Edmontonians continued to maintain that hardcore spirit as the sport quickly took root and expanded throughout the city. By the 1890s, hardly a village or school in the area was without its own team. With Edmonton firmly entrenched in the sport, the founding of the Edmonton and District Soccer Association in 1909 proved to be a logical way to organize teams across the city. Within a couple of years, the EDSA had enough teams to add intermediate and junior leagues to its roster, giving men of all skill sets the opportunity to engage in friendly competition. Unfortunately, soccer in Edmonton slowed to a crawl as World War I began. Although popularity never faltered, many players were called away to war. The game picked up again in the 20s with teams visiting from overseas to play Edmonton's finest, and the first commercial teams and leagues emerged. However, this rebirth was to be short-lived as war broke out once again. During this difficult time, the Canadian government strongly urged people to keep playing. They felt it would improve morale, but the sparse number of players available kept soccer idling until the mid-40s. As the war wound down, fresh talent began to flow into Alberta, with immigrants arriving from all across Europe and the rest of the world. This proved to be the jumpstart soccer needed, boosting numbers and energizing the game. It was an ideal way for newcomers to find their niche within the city, connecting them with their own countrymen and providing the opportunity to meet people from other nations. Many of these players were on the pitch before they could even speak English, combining their passion for soccer with the need to build friendships, find employment, and create a new home in this country. The 50s and 60s saw the growth of strong soccer clubs, fueled by the increase in immigration and the strong national pride that followed. These decades introduced successful groups, like the Italian-led Blue Angels, the Scottish Soccer Club, and the German-founded Victoria Club. No, well, Victoria, Victoria Soccer Club started in 1951. I joined Victoria Soccer Club in 1953. Actually, I immigrated on a, over a weekend and I had no job. I couldn't speak, speak English, you know, and I, um, I walked down White Avenue, I guess, and a guy came to me and he said, are you from Germany? I said, yeah. He says, can you play soccer? I said, a little bit, you know. I was a player for many, many years, and then I became president when I was very young, and I think I was successful with uh, building the Victoria Soccer Club as it is now. Uh, when I first came, yeah, I played a little bit there, I was Scottish and myself, and then uh, I got involved in the board of the society, and there was one soccer field there at the facility at that time, and uh, we decided to uh, expand it into six soccer fields, and uh, this was the best thing that the Scottish society ever done, because it uh, brought the community out to the society, and uh, the beneficiary beneficial package was that the the youth of uh, that area and surrounding areas in the city got to play on some of the top soccer fields. As the game built momentum throughout the 60s, teams from abroad once again began to visit the city, connecting Edmonton to the larger world, challenging local players, and encouraging a greater audience. Teams from as far away as England, Scotland and Germany came to play on the fields of Edmonton. With all the ongoing soccer activity, EDSA President Sam Donaghy swiftly responded by introducing the Soccer Bulletin. Produced by the Alberta Soccer Association, the Soccer Bulletin would keep Albertans up to date on current activities inside and outside of the province. The popularity of the humble Alberta newsletter soon grew to be nationwide. Because of this high interest, the Canadian Soccer Association took over production, with Sam Donaghy at the helm, and the publication became the Canadian Soccer News. 
As excitement grew, so did participation. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, children and women's teams quickly grew in number. For women especially, the 70s and early 80s were a pivotal time. Until this time, the EDSA was still a men's-only association. The popularity of the Edmonton Women's League prompted the EDSA to approach the league with a proposition. They would run the Women's League as long as a minimum of four teams could be guaranteed. With this, the Edmonton Association became the first in Canada to have women registered on Canadian Soccer Association forums. Women's soccer continued to prosper during these decades as teams such as the Angels emerged and flourished within Edmonton. This successful women's team commanded the respect of not only the Edmonton community, but of the nation itself. Their five consecutive national championships and European tour would catapult women's soccer in Edmonton to the forefront. The Angels were fortunate enough to uh, go down to Ontario and uh, play London Concord in uh, a one game winner take all national championship and uh, they had just come off a, a successful tournament in Hawaii and we just came down from having won our uh, provincial championship up in Edmonton and uh, after the game was all over and said and done the Angels walked away with a 4-0 win uh, against a team that was undefeated and uh, the first ever national Canadian championship. Even the thought of going to London to play that first Nationals against a team who just finished in Hawaii, we're like going, oh my God, you know what, I hope we don't get our butts kicked, but you know what, we went there with, with huge hearts and we were very successful. It was amazing. Although women gained membership in the EDSA and experienced great success on the pitch, the battle for equality within the organization was still underway. In 1980, Colleen Chapman became one of the first women on the board of directors going on to become the first female EDSA president. I was hired as the first secretary. When I first got elected, I didn't feel very confident, but um, by the next year, I, I felt like I was doing a good job. Nobody even stood for election uh, the next time I was elected, so I thought maybe I was doing okay. But I sat on the board and I heard what went on with field allocations, referee allocations, etc., when they were deciding things, and the men's board did not represent the women as well as they could have been. And so um, once they came in, they had to be treated equally. The, you know, the top tier women got the same fields as the top tier men did. This period also ushered in a time of productive change with the formation of the Edmonton Soccer Association and their acquisition of land for the first dedicated soccer fields. Up until this time, Players in Edmonton had relied on city fields, or those built by other soccer clubs. Yet another milestone was to occur that would change the face of the association. In 1978, the Mini World Cup was conceived. This tournament brought teams of all nationalities together in friendly competition. In its first year, 16 countries were represented. This number increased with the popularity of the event to over 50 countries showcased today. Men, women and children flock to the fields to root for their favorite country. The Mini World Cup, I remember, was way back in 78, we played in Kensman Fieldhouse. Only uh, one field to play on and lim limited number of teams. Now it's uh, probably the highlight of the year for most people to come out and the fans are fantastic from different countries, over you know, 50 countries involved. It's, it's one of the highlights, I would say, for the uh, indoor season for us. As the EDSA and soccer within Edmonton continued to expand, the lack of facilities became a serious problem. With exclusively outdoor fields, the fate of the games and tournaments were always at the mercy of the weather. In 1985, the ESA, under the leadership of Bill Gillespie, attained the Strathcona Soccer Centre with its two makeshift fields. This provided a band-aid solution. But with growing teams and huge events like the Mini World Cup, the EDSA needed more indoor facilities, so the Edmonton Soccer Association decided that further provisions would need to be made. The 1990s saw the welcome addition of two new indoor soccer centers, with four fields apiece. With eight indoor pitches now available, the EDSA was well equipped to handle its expanding membership and was now able to hold popular tournaments. When I first started playing, we only had one indoor soccer center. We called it the barn. And uh, it has, now we have th 
three awesome indoor soccer fields uh, buildings that I think are the envy of the country. Throughout the 90s, Edmonton soccer continued to grow. The demand for the inclusion of men and women over 35 became evident, so the Classics and Masters divisions were introduced. This opened the doors to a greater range of players. I had watched soccer, my kids had played soccer, I watched it for years, loved it, never played it. And then Classics came around, a friend phoned me, said, hey, they're doing Classic soccer, you probably like that. So we went on a list and ended up on a team. Great success also came out of this period for Canadian teams. The Ital Canadians took two national wins in 1994 and 1997, and the Angels had two of their national wins in 1995 and 1999. Been involved uh, with the Major League from its inception in the early 80s. Uh, went to six uh, national championships uh, in the 80s, uh, eventually winning two golds in 1994 and in 97. And to date, we're the only Edmonton team uh, that has ever won a national championship. They really wanted to win. They really wanted to achieve it after winning the national and they stick together and they practice hard. It was a good group, which uh, they were committed to that. And, uh, and that's, I think, what a uh, was at the main point for them it was to win in the national and until they achieve it they don't quit. As Edmonton entered the new millennium the association stayed hard at work matching pace with the rapidly advancing world. In 2002 the popular Fall Cup was founded allowing players one last outdoor competition before the snow drove them indoors for the winter. The construction of an additional indoor center in 2004 would provide the EDSA with another four fields to meet the demands of the expanding membership. In 2007, development of a new website and player database, electronic scheduling and rosters, and revised player cards took priority. And during the 2008 indoor season, the association continued to grow with the introduction of the Vintage Program for women over 45 and the Legends League for men over 45. Always standing on the support of its volunteers, the EDSA has never lacked dedicated help and continues to depend on hundreds of volunteers in the form of board members, managers, coaches, and other individuals dedicated to the sport. Over the past 100 years, the Edmonton and District Soccer Association has evolved. The association has expanded from four teams to almost 600, with more than 12,000 players participating. We play the game because it's part of our life. Uh, it helps you to make new friends, it makes you to find yourself in a new country for people like me who came here like, uh, and find a new home. Yes, a lot has changed, but through it all, one thing has remained constant. The passion for the sport is as vibrant as ever, and with expanding opportunities in the form of leagues, camps, and clinics for children, a future generation of EDSA members is already waiting in the wings. The Edmonton and District Soccer Association, looking back, heading forward.